Hey there everyone. So, uh, had a little bit of a setback on the Springer, because uh, why not? It's a project I'm working on and that's just what happens. Uh, so, just kind of fill you in here with the Springers, these buckets here. Uh, some of you have already commented in the previous video, but uh, these buckets, oh, too many, too many damn motorcycles, uh, are kind of a bear because behind the bulb, is this bracket and between the bracket and the bucket are these three rubber bushing type things actually i think i've still got one of them Let's head over here yeah these they're about yay tall you can see there's a thread sticking out there on the other end there's threads sticking straight up the problem is in between is just real soft silicone-ish type rubber and that bolt this bolt does not go all the way through so i had one of them that was so wore out and tired that it just couldn't hold up the weight of the bucket so went to go and you know loosen the acorn nut and the regular uh nut on the inside of the bucket and they just kept spinning and spinning and spinning so yeah, but eventually I came up with a plan. I did order something from Custom Dynamics. I might have already thrown it out. I think I might have. Let's check the garbage. That looks like I did. That's Harley stuff. Okay, so what we have, if this is going to come through, is an adapter uh, part number 2001-1330. And what it is, is essentially a new bolt and, or I guess three, three new bolts and uh, three pieces of what appears to be fuel line, pre-cut. So that way, once you get the, the, the silicone-ish rubber bits out of there, then you can just replace it. Technically, this is for, uh, if you're going with a specific type of Custom Dynamics headlight, you need to bring this uh, this bottom plate a little bit closer to the bucket so you get some more room in here. With the headlight I have, that's not required, but since it was fried anyway, I went ahead and figured what the hell, it was 10 bucks, ordered the kit. But, of course, inside the bucket is the bolt remaining. Yeah. Uh, which is just a little flat plate sticking through the bucket with threads and it was just spinning so i uh, went down to harbor freight and bought these let's get the light here and bought a set of channel locks or sorry not channel locks vice grips they were the like five inch just tiny tiny ones and that i was able to reach in grab a hold of the flat plate uh and then crack loose the acorn nut that's on the outside of the bucket and save myself a lot of cuss words. Uh, however, before I bought those, I took this plate here and stuffed it in my benchtop vise. And with the vise grips I had, I just could not get a hold of that, that flat plate. So I drilled them out. And it worked. I mean, it kind of scuffed up the, the plate a little bit. But I didn't bend it. So that to me, that was a win. So now that we finally got this, it's it's secure. It's not going anywhere. It's not bouncing until it is loose because once I get the new headlight in here, I'm going to have to aim it. So no sense in snugging down uh, this bolt and the one on the opposing side when I'm just going to have to loosen them up to, to aim the bucket. So yes, I've got movement. That will go away. So what we're going to work on today is lighting. I don't know if we're gonna get it all done tonight because one of the, the lights that I have is gonna be a little bit more involved. So, cause I'm gonna be turning those two rear blinkers from strictly turn to run brake turn. And that involves kind of getting into the wiring a little bit with these Positaps that Harley, or not Harley, that Custom Dynamics uh, includes in their program. But before we get into that, that brake pad came in, brake pedal pad came in finally from China. There it is. So uh, anodized aluminum 
uh, milled. These are just little spikes that thread in. It uh, did not come with Loctite. I did not use Loctite, uh, but I did kind of snug these down with the cheap old wrench that they included. If they start coming loose, I will pull them all and put Loctite on. But in the meantime, I've got two extra spikes. So, you know, we got that and that. It's not a perfect match, but I think it's gonna be close enough for government work. Plus now, since my foot's only gonna catch this most outer edge, since the air cleaner here gets in the way of my knee, now I don't have to worry about my uh, foot sliding off when I'm trying to slow down. So we're gonna head back over to our box of goodies. Sam, old brake pedal, garbage. Got some more stuff over here. We'll go over that in another video. But this is our box of Custom Dynamics goodies. Let's get that over there. First and foremost, we've got the new tail light. It is smoked. And typically, you put them in yeah, any other bike, kind of like that. But with these uh, Bob style fenders, it actually goes in upside down. So that way the window right there illuminates your license plate. At least that's what they told me on the phone. So the next item up here is our stabilizer because without this, as soon as I hit those blinkers, I'm gonna get a hyper flash. So we don't want that. This is gonna balance it out since apparently the, the bike is expecting a bigger load on the electrical system with the incandescent bulbs than what it gets with LEDs. This tricks it into thinking it's getting all the power that it should be getting. Let's see here. Next, we've got smoked lenses because we're going to get rid of those awful, uh, really big uh, orange lenses up front. And I think red's in the back. And we're going to go to a real slim lens. And that's more lenses. Here we go. And now we've got our blinkers. I believe these are our rears. I think they are. Yep, these are our rears. So, and next up is our fronts. Those are just be real simple plug and play. Shouldn't have to do anything there. So, and then the posit taps that I did go ahead and spring for. Probably pay, overpaid for them, but at least it was an option. So we got that. And then our new headlight. We've got too much, too much money in the way here. There we go. So just the five and three quarter inch uh, chrome backed. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this comes through on the camera okay. I can get a hold of the foam. There we go. So there we go. Just a chrome backed LED headlights. The, First time I've ever actually had one of the custom dynamics headlights. You know, that's Harley's. This is a Chinese company called Sun Pai. So it looks real similar, but it it's Chinese. So don't get me wrong, it's been doing great. I got no qualms and for, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks on that headlight, it, it's been worth it. And then these side lights are also Sun Pai and that was 25 or 30 bucks for the pair. So for all three lights, no housings, but just the lights themselves, I'm all in maybe a hundred bucks. So anyway, so I think we're gonna start with getting the headlight in, then we'll do the front blinkers, and then I'll spin the bike around and may or may not tackle the rear, the rear blinkers tonight. I don't know, we'll, we'll see how my motivation holds up. It's a little bit warmer tonight. So I don't have the heater on, but by warmer, I mean, it's probably 28 degrees outside. So we'll see how much my motivation keeps going. But uh, I will check in with you guys once we've got the headlight in, because we're just going to set it in the bucket, put the retainer ring on, and then tighten down the beauty ring, which holds all in place. That's, to me, not really worth videoing. But I will pick you guys back up once we got that in and then we start working on the, the front blinker. So sit tight. All right. Headlight is in. Yeah, for you individuals that 
derive way too much enjoyment out of that. That one was for you. So anyway, no, it looks good. It was real easy. I almost forgot about the actual retainer ring that's supposed to go around the headlight into the bucket before the re... It, it's, it's, a, it's me. It's what I do. I forget stupid crap like that. So moving on, like I said, blinkers. It's just supposed to be a Phillips on each side. On each side. Don't mind this being loose. I, I've been fiddling. So, but I don't know if you're gonna see it. We've got a Phillips there, and one of the previous owners just swapped to a white flathead there. So I've got a Phillips. I've got a flat. That one's what it should be. Two Phillips. So we'll go ahead and pop this out. Let's see if I can. Can't do that one-handed. I guess probably gonna need both screwdrivers there. Uh, of course, I didn't set up my handy dandy tripod to do this, so we'll see if I can't chase this blinker around one handed. Okay, I'm drop the screws. Might have to see if I can't find a small screw to replace this wrong one. Oh, it's coming! It's coming! If that falls, I don't really care, but if I don't have to bend over and chase something. Ha oh, ha! There it goes. Set that down. And simple push in and turn. And there it goes. That is... It looks like we got some dielectric grease in there. Or at least it did at one point. Uh, let's see here. Because I know LEDs do not like dielectric grease. So I might try to get in there and clean that up a little bit. But I won't do that with you guys on camera. So sit tight again. Okay, so went ahead and wiped that bucket out, got that uh, grease out of there. So, and now on these from Custom Dynamics, see if I can't catch her that, you'll see a little slot there. So that way you can just put a flathead in there and give it a twist as opposed to all the ones that I've fiddled with. And you just kind of have to hope and pray that you get enough finger on there. Oh, maybe that was upside down. You have a 50-50 shot, you know? Fortunately, I didn't need the screwdriver, but I was able to push in, turn, lock it into place. And let's make sure that works before we start going too hog wild. Ooh, that works. And flashing, oh, and it's not flashing, but that's okay. That could be because I don't have the, the module in there yet. So, Gonna, gonna keep that in mind. We're still gonna get it buttoned up, but the the new kits do come with little little packets here that has replacement screws. So I don't have to worry about tracking one down. I got them in here, along with a gasket for the screws and then a smaller gasket I'm assuming is supposed to go around the back of that. I'm not sure, my best guess. So I'll probably pop this out, put that in, get the new lens on and let you guys know how it looks. All right, so we're back to our good news, bad news, because again, me. So the lenses they sent me, they look great, they feel great, and they even come with a rather large gasket that goes around the perimeter of the lens that connects to the housing to help waterproof it along with two small gaskets to go around the screws that hold the lens in. Problem is, the lenses they sent are, best I can tell, for those lollipop-style headlights on the back of Road King Standards and Heritages. Heritage I? Her yeah, the Heritage, let's put it that way. So my mounting holes aren't lining up. So I just went ahead, put those back on. That works, they light up. Still not flashing, but I think that's the load equalizer that I still have to do. So on Monday or Tuesday, I'm gonna reach out to Custom Dynamics and see what other options I have. Maybe I screwed up and I grabbed the wrong lens. I don't know, but I'm gonna give them a holler. They're real good to work with. So in the meantime, I did go ahead and pull the seat off and we're gonna be working on our load equalizer here. It's kind of a pass-through setup. You know, that just kind of dangles there. So these two go in line with the electrical. 
So I already found where my my plug is, and it's this guy here. I already loosened it so nobody freak out, but I'm just gonna pop that off. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. And then, let's see here. Oh, that clicked. And the fun part, trying to do this one-handed. Don't know that I'll be able to, so I might have to check back because it's, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Oh, hey, that clicked. Okay, so that's in line. So in theory, this should be done. Obviously, I have to tidy that up. So let's see here. Everything's still on. Hey, we're blinking. Excellent. So the directions do talk about doing a uh, synchronization process. So it's right blinker for two blinks, left blinker for two blinks, right blinker for 10, and then ignition off. So I'll probably give that a whirl. I just, that was, you guys saw me. That was probably the easiest thing I've done to this damn thing. Uh, and now I just gotta find a place to make a home for it. I'm starting to get cold. Uh, so we're probably gonna pick this up tomorrow on the back of the bike. And I'm probably gonna run into the same issue with the lenses back there, but I'll let you know if I do, or you'll find out with me either way. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna shut this down. I'm gonna go inside and get warm. So we'll see you guys in the morning. All right, so it's the next day. I did get a little froggy after I signed off last night and I did set up the, the new tail light and it works, but I obviously have to take it off again so I can wire up the, the blinkers. So we'll kind of go through that install process. It's real straightforward. But I went ahead and got the low side blinker set up just so I could kind of figure it out. So you'll see we got some wires hanging out here. So basically, I had two T45s, well actually three T45s with a 9 nut on the back of this one, this one, and this one. However, these two are a, uh, I lost it. They're an Allen that's a 7 sixteenths with a 9 sixteenths nut on the back. So I took this whole fender support off. On the back side of this stem was a T40. So I could separate the stem and the housing from the stay. Went over to the workbench, and I'll show you guys once I get to that one. But I ran these two wires, an orange and a red, through the existing hole in the bucket that had a rubber grommet, through the stem, through the fender, and then back up through this hole here and out. So I did it, obviously I had to unplug my two blinkers. They're real difficult if you don't have just this tiny little pick to come in at it from underneath up towards the front of the bike. So I got that loose. This is obviously the main harness. I'm gonna have to tap into two of these wires. I will double check, but I'm pretty sure I need to tap into the purple and then the red with a white stripe. One, the purple I believe is constant power, so that's gonna be my run light. And I believe the red and white is going to be my brake. So I'm just gonna double check my schematics before we get there. So now that this is done, uh, we'll just kind of set that aside. We'll tackle the high side, get it all disassembled and over to the workbench. And I'll show you guys what I was talking about inside this bucket for running through the stem and then into the fender. All right, so here's what I was talking about. See that little rubber grommet? My fat finger's not in the way. There's just enough room in there with the, the stock socket wiring to feed that through to the other side and then pass it through that large opening out the other end. We'll pull the slack and then we'll go from the, the back side of our stay through this hole. Actually, now I guess we'll go through the front side of this stay through the hole and we'll just kind of 
pull everything out and then we'll feed it through everything on the back, just like we have there. So just wanted to, to show you this little, little rubber grommet. The directions tell you you have to drill a hole, but you don't, at least with a, a 2000 Springer. I mean, I'm sure the regular soft tails are the same way. The Heritage Springer is probably the same way. I mean, I, I don't know, don't quote me on that, but at least with my bike, I've got a rubber grommet right there. I was able to trace everything through and not drill a one eighth hole because I really didn't want to have to do that. So I'm going to finish pulling the wires here, get everything back up on the bike there. And again, read the directions and see which one of those little wires, which two I have to tap into. So way I do it the right the first time, which would be a first for me. So one sec. All right, so hopefully my light's not casting too much of a glare, but it ended up not being the purple wire. So I went a posi tap to a blue wire and a posi tap, see if I can get that to come through, to a red wire with a white line. I really can't tell if that's coming through. So just so you know, one tap to blue, one tap to red with a white stripe. The blue wire, uh, posi tap, you connect the two orange wires to, and the posi tap going to the red with white stripe gets the two red wires. So I did connect to the purple, and of course I was wrong. So I undid it, popped it onto the blue, lo and behold, it worked. So there is a video on Custom Dynamics website. It's uh, one of their oldest videos, but it kind of walks you through it, but it leaves a little to be desired. So I wanted to get in here a little bit closer. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Uh, I did take a bundle of wires there, zip tied them together and shoved them back in that hole. And I'm going to do the same thing with these wires and I'll shove them up into, uh, let's see here, this hole here. Just kind of get them out of the way, especially when I go to put the new light on. So let me get that zip tied and stuffed away and then we'll come back when it's time to actually put the uh, tail light in. All right, so there's our light. There's our plug, just went and plugged it in, let it hang. Everything's tied up neatly. So last night I did go ahead and take the gasket, pulled the paper off, applied it to the light and it looks like it might have shifted on me a little bit so we'll see if I can not adjust that a little bit. But for my application, I have to run this light upside down so that way it casts a light on my plate here. So it does come with uh, these little plastic washers, nylon washers that you put on your stock bolts. So you will reuse those. And then we just run it in there. Be careful tightening it because you can crack the housing. And if you crack the housing, Custom Dynamics will not warranty the light. They spell that out very clearly in their paperwork. So I'm going to go to get these screws in there and then let you guys see how it looks all finished up. And then we'll kind of do a tour of the new lighting. All right. So she's wrapped up. Everything works. I did have a slight issue with the blinkers. Uh, hit them and they'd flash a couple of times and then they pause on and then they'd flash again. I thought it was a synchronization issue. It's not what it is, is on this load equalizer, there's a switch and you got, it's con uh, one side is regular or normal, the other side is high, it has to do with resistance, I think. As soon as I switched it to high, took care of that issue. So, we'll just go ahead and click that on. We'll throw on a blinker. And you can see, that is way, way brighter. Now, obviously I've got the old lenses on that are yellow front and rear. I did go ahead and order the smoked ones because as we've all established, I'm an idiot. And I ordered the flat ones, which only work for, uh, you know, if you have the flat style front and rear like the lollipops. So let me see if I can't set you up on my wife's hood here. We'll get a shot of that brake light working, hopefully. We don't fall. Mm. 
All right, so as you can see, there's a slight delay when that blinker turns off before the, the red LEDs come on, because they do flash amber and stay on in red. So now we'll come around to the front. And that is way, way more brighter. So as best as, you know, this camera will pick up all of the lights, but it's a, the blinkers are running white, flashing amber, which again, you can't tell because of the amber lenses. And then the headlight, headlight still needs to be aimed and adjusted, but this is way brighter and it should make riding around town a whole lot safer. So anyway, so that's it for the lighting. Uh, it was not as those tail lights on the rear weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be, but it was still a bit of an ordeal to you know, pull those fender struts, but at least it, only one at a time. So I pulled them both and that fender had gone flying. So yeah, uh, probably took me just to do the two uh, rear blinker conversions. Oh, probably about an hour. So tail light was nothing. Uh, front lights were nothing. It was all just plug and play. So, and again, Custom Dynamics, they've got a, a lifetime warranty on their stuff, on their LEDs. So if they ever go out, hit them up, they'll get you a new one. No questions asked. But if you've got a Springer and that headlight bucket, I recommend the really little uh, vice grips so you can get those rubber isolator screw combo things out of there and either just replace them with some small pieces of fuel line. Uh, but if you do, then you gotta go and buy some bolts that are gonna go all the way through or for 10 bucks, you can get the Cousin Dynamics kit that has the bolts, has the, the rubber gaskets that I did have to trim a couple of them down. Now they were just randomly snipped. So be prepared, you know, forewarned. But at least uh, it's more of a, a permanent fix instead of replacing it with the Harley stuff, which I found on Dennis Kirk. It was actually more expensive to get that than to go with the Custom Dynamics option. So spend less, get a better fix, spend more, and have to do this again in, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, however long it takes for that rubber to rot away. So that's all I've got. Uh, new brake line is on, uh, actually routed, not, not, uh, hasn't been bled or anything, but I think this is roughly where it's gonna go. I do have a new brake line coming because full lock right, that's just a little bit snugger than I prefer. That's gonna go braided stainless, two inches longer, and then the throttle cables uh, while we're at it, we're just going to go ahead and replace those with some braided stainless too. But I went with stock length because full lock either direction, plenty of room. So that'll be an upcoming video once those cables are in. And we're nearing the end of the projects that I have set aside for this thing. So I am, am a little tossed if I'm going to go with a solo seat on this or if I want to go with a narrow two up seat. Uh, but if I do, then I got to replace the passenger pegs and, and I'll get them to match the Arlen Nesses. Or if I go solo, then I just pull those pegs off. But I don't have the greatest track record trying to pull passenger pegs off with these two. Uh, if I do pull them, hopefully I've learned some lessons from these because I've had to take both of these to a dealer to extract stripped bolts. So, friendly DIY. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here and wipe down all my fingerprints and whatnot. So y'all stay safe. We'll catch you next time. Later.